After getting back on Twitter for the first time in like 10 years, I still am not a big fan of it. I don't trust it, but I also am finding some pretty cool stuff on there from some pretty cool people. And this one that I'm going to share with you today is from The Archivist, and he posted it a, called a Colorado Yarn. And it relates to the Goonies and kind of just like uh, the thought. It brings up the whole thought of about finding ships still in caverns, which makes me think immediately of, you know, my favorite movie in the history of my entire life, Goonies. The, no other movie has affected me as um, just strongly as Goonies has throughout the years since I first saw it when I was born, when, pretty much when it came out. And uh, so I am always looking for, you know, what was the meaning? Spielberg has his own list of things that's associated with him and there's symbolism in movies all over the place. And, you know, what did they put in my uh, the movie that seemed to mold my childhood and, uh, you know, the <laughs> just... You know, have, has things that have stuck with me ever since. I met Sean Astin once at a Comic Con and I, I gave him a CD. I actually, our, our CD, uh, what my band CD actually links up with the Goonies, like the Pink Floyd with Wizard of Oz, but I think in a way more intense way. And uh, it's this is the album here, Samus Octology. They link up perfectly. Just hit play at the same time and hit it on repeat, have the CD on repeat so you hear it twice. And wow. But amazing i love goonies i love all this stuff and this yarn reminded me of goonies so i had to share it here and read it so that people can just sit back put on some music listen to it see some images that first intro image was created by ai and the end images are created by ai but other than that the rest are shipwrecks that are found and um so you'll enjoy that i think there's a good collection and it's a good little story he's got this guy posted it amazing stuff and uh, just makes you think, you know, there's all kinds of things going around that I, I haven't seen in some of the videos in this community. So it's good to, uh, that is kind of the benefit of Twitter, what I'm seeing now. The rest is just whatever. It's another social media of just controlled mess. But here we go. I'm going to read this because I think you'll all like it. And um, again, it makes me think of Goonies. I love thinking about the Goonies, and I love finding about underground things that are that are still happening. Because I mean, I, if you've ever read Eddie Dorpa or a number of different Hollow Earth and different theories, you know, there's so much water underneath. And the Mariana Trench goes like how many miles? Five plus, probably way more miles deep. There's still water down there, so there that makes sense that there'd be water throughout all the underground layers in certain spots, controlled, filtered in different ways. You know, when you see the catacombs and you see different waters in there or different you know areas you could envision that there'd be pools of water i have no idea but i imagine that there is stuff like this and so i would see it being as more of a of a reality and then less of a yarn and i hope they come across some stuff and who knows maybe spielberg planted it in goonies and so we'd all kind of get it that movie has a lot map one-eyed willie is a little suspect that that term you know ooh, it's kind of like uh yeah we don't need to go there but either way the underground cavern the ships the booby traps the gold the treasure, the, the ancient maps, the civilization, the lost stuff, the underground tunnels that they go in on the cliffside, the coasts having underwater civilizations, underwater things. So uh, you, never really, uh, you never really know. And here we go. It's time to read it. It's a three little columns, pretty quick, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. A Colorado Yarn. The Leadville Chronicle publishes an account of the most marvelous discovery yet made by mortal man, provided that it is true, <laughs> which is more than doubtful. Okay, so take that, you know, take that as you will. Two miners, were, while sinking a shaft near Redcliffe, are represented to have found a deep subterranean chamber without apparent communication with the open air. What they claim to have seen is thus described. The cave, at first, seemed empty, but as their eyes gradually became accustomed to the deep gloom, the men saw in the further extremity a huge black object, which, not without some trepidation, they approached. As they neared it, to their unbounded amazement, they made out the lines of some sort of sailing craft. It was as nearly as they could judge, about 60 feet long by some 30 feet wide, and lay tilted forward at an angle of about 15 degrees over a rough pile of stone. The body of the craft was built of short lengths of some dark and very porous wood, resembling our black walnut, if it could be imagined, with the grain pulled apart like a sponge or a piece of bread, and made perfectly square. Both ends, it was evidently intended for sailing either way, were turned abruptly up like the toe of a peaked Moorish slipper. The planking was apparently 
double riveted on with nails of extremely hard copper, only slightly rust eaten, and with the heads cut or filed in an octagonal shape, while on the upper edge of the ship, eleven large rings of the same metal, and evidently for the securing of rigging, were counted. At the bottom rigging were, were count, oh, blah, blah, blah. at the bottom edges of the craft, and running its entire length, were two keels, some four and a half feet deep and six inches thick, hung on metallic hinges, and at the ends were fastened rough copper rods, extending upward and bent over so as to appro attach to two masts rising from the upper edges. If the cross of an inverted V be conceived to represent the deck lines, the two stems are at about the angle and position of the masts. These were upward of 20 feet long, and as evidence that a sail was at one time stretched across, some ragged remnants of what appeared to be cording were found clinging to the inner edges. The ends of the masts were secured in pivots, and it was evident that in tacking one could be moved forward and the other back, thus bringing the sail at an angle with the body of the ship an idea which it might not be bad for our modern navigation to imitate. This is a pretty detailed account. This, is, it is believed, also explains the copper rods which moved the keels so as to reciprocate the position of the masts. While the whole ship was intact, the wood crumbled like dust beneath the finger touch, and fearful of trap falls, the two the booby traps, the two prospectors did not venture to explore the interior. Lying on the ground nearby, however, was discovered a gold instrument bearing a rude resemblance to the sextant of the present day and possibly used to calculate their longitude. No trace of any writing was found save at one end of the ship, where about midway on the bow of the ship, enclosed in a metal ring, were 26 copper characters riveted to the wood and bearing much resemblance to the Chinese hieroglyphics of the present day. No human remains of any sort were found, although it is possible that a search in the hold will reveal something of this sort. T Chinese hieroglyphs, Tartarian, uh, something ridiculous. The story is in Colorado. Oh my god, I wish we knew. Here we go, last column. Without pushing their investigations further, the two miners, lost in wonderment, retraced their steps to the upper air leaving the ghastly ship once more in gloom and silence. By this time it had grown quite dark above, and with that tacit understanding existing among men who had seen that which borders upon the supernatural, they spoke but little between themselves of the discovery, but sought rest by their kindling campfire. In the morning, the whole thing seemed so much like a dream that they were seriously inclined to regard it as some morbid fantasy, some disordered vision of the brain alone, having no substance in reality, and eagerly, yet with a strange dread, they descended the rope again. As sh assuring themselves by a short survey of the facts they had learned the night before, the prospectors hurriedly ascended the shaft and spent the rest of the day in concealing, as well as possible, the traces of their excavation. This done, they went to the cabin of a well-to-do miner living some thirty miles down the gulch, and to him first told their extraordinary story. The gentleman is perfectly reliable, and together with a well-known mining expert residing in this city, has seen and examined the ship and will take steps to preserve the wonderful discovery to the world in all its possibly great historical value. The minute particulars as to locality are at present withheld for a very obvious reason. They would attract a horde of vanda, vandalism, sightseers, vanda sightseers, I like that, who would soon destroy the moldering dust beyond hope of restoration, and until the proper authorities can be sent for, they will not be published. The discovery of the junk-like ship with its unknown architecture, hermetically sealed in a cavern 50 feet below the surface, 50 feet below the surface of the earth, gives scope to indefinite speculation, the only possible explanation Seems, however, that ages or eons, perhaps, ago, agone, a vessel bearing a crew of bold discoverers, tossed by the waves, sought a harbor in a cave within a cliff. The waves then receding left it stranded there, and so great continental divide, the awful upheavals and convulsions of nature, which we know so little of and can only blindly speculate on, pressed the face of the earth together and sealed it in a living grave. Awesome. What a story. Holy God. I wonder if anyone out there knows any more to do with this kind of um, 
the story or if there's any been ever been anything else or if the Smithsonian just swooped in or some likewise agency just swooped in took it all either crumbled it to dust took pictures preserved it stashed it somewhere tell their people in secret and then eradicate it well, there were no traces of these people here. If there is a ship like that in Colorado, what can we deduce from that? You know, did the ocean extend from there? Were there giant lakes, the river, the Colorado River, did that extend all over the place? So much to wonder about the ancient area, especially in the west of America. If you've ever been there and you've seen the Grand Canyon and you've seen any of the areas around there, the mountains, just driving on the regular highways, you see an astounding amount of things that can be be, um, you know, can't be explained by sheer geolog geological just uh, coincidence or natural erosion or whatever. Something is lost in translation and lost in historical and scientific perspective. And, you know, everything out there is theory, again, so I don't cling to one particular thing. I just continue to wonder what is going on here. And just so you know, I'm not trying to convince, I'm not trying to uh, fool anyone. These images that you're going to see here are AI images with uh, that kind of description in mind. You know, talking about this, um, you know, a ship, elaborate, ornate, uh, precious stones in a cavern, all kinds of interesting things. And uh, so it helps give us a little vision of uh, things that I can't really, um, it would take me forever to draw, so it's easier to just type a couple sentences in. In Moana, all the same thing happens. She finds a boat in a cave, ancient boat, they, the past civilization, past people, generations sealed up in there, and then she, with a spiral on the, on the ship, of course, on the sail, still intact. You know, this was less hidden, but still kind of, you know, they, they love to point things out at us and, you know, make people think that um, things are such fairy tales when in actuality there's a lot of truth behind them. And so, um, you know, Moana, Goonies, uh, there's a lot of different movies that show things that, um, you know, relate and, sh and lead towards, you know, there being some kind of hidden knowledge and, uh, and whatnot that we're not privy to. And in these caves, the ones, I mean, in Mexico and everywhere, there's an underground majesty over there. And there's so many places underground in Poland and salt mines and different things everywhere where they're so deep. And, you know, then they, there's different waters at the bottom or in certain areas. It's not just like, you know, the whole, all of this cavernous realm underneath us is filled with water. It's a very elaborate system that we really have no clue about. And, um, you know, there could be so much. There really could be. And there's a big book called Eddie Dorpa. I've mentioned it before, Aphrodite Backwards. Easy way to remember it. But they talk about things like this. And at one point he gets in a, like a little boat with someone and rides along. It glistens on a, just a perfectly flat, um, just plane of water. And there's, there's several different instances in that story and in many others. So the world's down there. Wow, I can't even imagine. And, you know, the people who have lived down there, the people who have experienced it, you know, their stories will never reach us. There'll never be a movie about them unless it's just brought off as pure fantasy and pure fiction. But, the, you know, the, the, at, well, I won't say never because I really think we all need to join forces and, and repurpose and re-steer archaeology into the direction that we're seeing. And, you know, there's a lot of places that could be excavated in America to find some really cool things. And um, why not? If we can learn more about everything, it's, it's extremely valuable. Everyone tries to belittle, like, you know, what the, like, oh, the flat earth means nothing. Oh, these ancient civilization, all this talk of lost history, who cares? What, is it, what does it matter when I'm buying groceries today? But it does matter because it can, has a lot of areas and elements that can unite people in a great way and it, it just empower us when, we've, when we know where we came from and what has been done in the past. Instead of just staying home and just doing nothing and consuming, we want to go explore, we want to discover, we want to make a change while in our time here, our precious, miraculous, beautiful time here. So I hope the story expanded the mind and uh, let me know your thoughts, goonies, whatever, ancient ships, if you've heard this before, let me know. Love talking about this stuff, really amazing, bless you all.